folks, Scott here with the new My Monthly Hero January 2023 kit. Happy New Year to everybody and welcome to 2023. Our kit this month, of course, comes in this 8x10 zippered pouch. We are going right to Valentine's Day this month. Let's see what we've got in our kit. We've got a 6x8 inch clear stamp set. Valentine's is the gig. It looks like this whole kit is kind of built around this matchbox here. Looks like we're going for some punny Valentine's this month. Baby, you let my fire. <laughs> There's that stamp right there. Looks like these are mostly made to fit on that matchbox. Of course, we're a perfect match. Happiness, a kiss, love, sending, filled with your a gem for you. A perfect match with two doves. Good wishes, a little teddy bear, or maybe that's a gummy bear. Valentine, happy Valentine's Day. Reasons why I love you, XOXO. And this fun nutrition facts, serving size one of hearts. <laughs> that's really cute. <laughs> then, of course, we also get 18 fancy dies and two frame cuts. So I think these are the fancy dies and this box with flaps and this interior box, I think make up our match box. So this inner piece should actually slide in and out of that larger piece because of the flaps on the side. There's a couple of gems, hearts, letters, a heart flower, a ring. There's your little gummy bear cutout, the frame around him. There's matches here, a heart match, kissy lips. There's a flame, a love sentiment here, and a big dove. Of course, there's a chocolate kiss and a couple more hearts. That's our die set this month. And then we get this heart-shaped daisies stencil. Stencil with all these daisies with their petals are all heart-shaped, a heart-shaped daisy stencil. We also get one sheet each of azalea, and peony cardstock, and then three sheets of craft cardstocks. And then to finish all of this goodness off, we get a package of Love Mix sequins, which are all like patterned sequins with little stripes, silver, red, and white with stripes. Nice little embellishment there. So that's everything in our kit this month. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's make some Valentines. And here we have my 10 cards. We've got all craft and white card bases. Little thumb notch there. Maybe there's a little surprise at the end of our list today. I'm sorry this post is a little bit tardy, but we were actually able to spend some holiday time with my family in Kansas right after the new year. It's been three years since we've all been able to get together. It was great to see everybody and reconnect so I completely embraced the Valentine theme this month, and most of the stamps seemed geared towards the matchbox, but let me tell you that wide variety of dies expands the possibilities of this kit way beyond a simple matchbox. But a simple matchbox is where I started. We've got, we're a perfect match. Good pun. I stamped the sentiment on a piece of thin craft cardstock. I found that the craft cardstock in our kit was a little too thick to make some of those tab folds look clean. So I stamped it first in unicorn white pigment ink, and then I shifted it slightly and stamped it in vermilion archival ink. I used that permanent archival ink so it would actually cover the white and give us a simple two-tone printing that I think you often see on matchboxes. I die cut the piece and folded over the side flaps. I added a darker brown strike plate on one side and I die cut the inside box from the darker craft card stock in the kit. Now, I think I may be using this die backwards. I look online and everybody is using their die with the strike plate to the left so that this is at the bottom and the box goes inside this way. But I immediately <laughs> thought that this box would go in this way, right through that slit on the top. And that way you can actually see the box inside when it's completely closed, quote unquote. For some reason, that's where my mind went when I first looked at this. 
I'm sure it doesn't matter much which direction it goes in, <laughs> but I would think you'd want that bottom to stick out through that slot there. Anyway, that's how I made my matchboxes this month. <laughs> I took those three heart dies, and before I detached them from each other, I die cut a bunch of them from uh, three red cardstocks. These are from the Altenew Red Cosmos Gradient cardstock set. I used Frosty Pink, Coral Berry, and Ruby Red. I die cut a whole bunch of those. That gives me a lot of options for a bunch of these kind of fun target hearts using all three colors. The matches are die cut from some light gray cardstock and the match heads are cut from some dark gray cardstock and trimmed down and then glued onto the sticks. I die cut the flames from some textured red and yellow cardstock and glued those to the match heads. I did do some ink smooshing on an A2 card front with the Tattered Rose Distress Oxide ink and then I glued all of my elements down in place. Now I thought about making the inner box pull out but I settled on this static arrangement. I think it's interesting how quickly I gravitated to the dies in this kit. Lots of options with those dies. And I do love that double stamped sentiment. Nice highlights on that. We're a perfect match. Now, there are some uh, unique and very interesting stamps in our stamp set. I started fooling around with some of those and came up with this. Warning, it contains love. This is my Box of Valentine card. <laughs> I fiddled around with these four stamps on some scrap cardstock and came up with this little arrangement. And then I just sketched a little perspective box around that. I stamped the Valentine portion with cotton candy, peony, and azalea inks and gave me a nice gradient. And then I stamped all the text stamps with intense black ink. And using my original sketch, I cut out a piece of white cardstock in the shape of a whole box and stamped the XOXO on the side of a bit of an angle. I believe those are stamped in the cotton candy ink. And then I did some ink blending on the top and on the side with azalea and peony inks, and I outlined all the edges with a black marker. I trimmed down the stamped label and glued that to the front of the box. I did use a white gel pen and a black Pigma pen to do a little sketching around on that Valentine stamp. And I attached the box to a craft cardstock base. This one is from the kit with foam tape. I think that nutrition stamp is very unique and quirky. That's what inspired this whole card for me. That deserves to be highlighted on this box of Valentine card. <laughs> I wonder what's inside <laughs> one of our little heart sequins in the middle of the heart stamp there. It's the only touch of shine on that card. Valentine, a box of Valentine. <laughs> now, I did spend some time with the heart-shaped daisy stencil using Hero Arts white pearl and glitter hero paste on some craft cardstock. Once that was dry, I took a yellow alcohol marker to the centers. I love the sparkle and shine on this, and I wanted to figure out a way to show off as much of this stencil as possible. And we have a happy Valentine's Day. This banner stamp seemed to take up the least amount of room of all of our image stamps. So I stamped that on a scrap of off-white cardstock using Hero Arts Butter Bar, Tangerine, and Azalea inks. After the colors were down, I stamped a layer of embossing and watermark ink on top and embossed the whole piece with clear embossing powder. I can't let that background have all of the sparkle. <laughs> I fussy cut the sentiment. Yes, it was a little tedious and glued that to a one and a half inch by two and three eighths inch piece of vellum. I die cut the background with a nesting rectangle die to three and three quarter inches by five inches. I glued that to a four inch by five and a quarter inch yellow mat and then down to an A2 white card base. I glued the sentiment flat to the card front and added three small hearts, all die cut from some textured red, orange, and yellow card stock. A clear glaze pen adds a little bit of shine to the die cut hearts and a spot of foam tape gives them a little dimension. I enjoyed figuring out how to bring some yellow into a valentine and the sparkle on this is just lovely. Happy Valentine's Day!
Okay, it's time to experiment with the interactive nature of that faux matchbox frame dies. So our next card is a perfect match with a pull heart on one end. And you pull and you've got two heart-shaped matches with a warning contains love stamped on the side. A perfect match. And on the inside... We're sending love. The background is a piece of Tim Holtz pattern paper that I printed this hand-drawn XOXO pattern on. That pattern is a new background I got from Silhouette, and it'll turn any paper into a Valentine background. <laughs> I trimmed that to four inches by five and a quarter and glued it to a craft from the card kit card base. I die cut the heart from pink and stamped the pull command on that from the uh, My Favorite Things Interactive Labels stamp set. That comes in handy, as well as a sentiment on the side using intense black ink. This is all made the same as my first card, but stamped with the Dove sentiment and colored with colored pencils. I also shaded the bottom of the inside box and colored the heads of my heart matches, die cut from gray cardstock, with colored pencils as well. So I glued the tabs of the matchbox to the card front and slipped the inner box through the slit. Now I did add, you can feel there's a little stop there. I did add a piece of cardstock to the back of our inner box, just right there. I think you can see that. Hoping that it would catch the lip of the lid and make it less prone to come out. You can still take it out, but you can see it actually does give a bit of a stop there. I did decorate the inside of the card using the bird die and the double heart die, and I added the sending love sentiment with intense black ink. That appropriately matches the doves on the front and completes the sentiment on this card. A perfect match. Warning contains love. Sending love. That's a great Valentine. This looks like a tattoo, though. <laughs> Those matchbox dies work extremely well. In, in fact, all of the dies in this kit are, it's just the possibilities seem endless. My next card here is another Ascending Love card. This is a white A2 card base. This is a peony background cut to four inches by five and a quarter. Textured red card stock with a scallop heart border punch. The envelope is die cut from some ivory cardstock. The heart is colored with alcohol markers. The love die is cut from peony and ruby red cardstock. The sending sentiment is staffed with unicorn white ink and embossed with very vanilla embossing powder. Finally, lots of those heart shaped sequins from the sequin pack. Just the right amount of shimmer. This feels like a very traditional Valentine card. Sending love. Now, there are, of course, dies that have matching stamped sentiments. So, of course, I had to go there. This, again, is on another craft card base. And we have your a gem. Using the match box without the inner box. I used white pearlescent cardstock for the box with the tabs cut off. I just simply cut the tabs off. And the sentiment is stamped in intense black ink and clear embossed and vermilion archival ink on the side. Warning, contains love. I cut the ring from gold cardstock and a white glitter diamond glued on top of that. And the emerald and rubies die cut from more glitter cardstock and some more diamonds. I arranged them all coming out of the top of the box or my top of the box. <laughs> some touches of alcohol marker help add a little more definition to the facets of the gems, and they're all mounted to the card front with foam tape. Oh, and I also did a little ink blending around the edges of our card base with some azalea ink. You're a gem, aren't you just? Now, I have to admit that the uh, gummy bear stamp in our stamp set kind of threw me. There's no sweets or sweeties in our sentiments. There's no reference to gummies or bears. I particularly do not really care for gummy bears. So I thought I'd try something maybe a little bit different for this next card. And we have 
Without you, life would be unbearable. <laughs> little pun. And a little teddy bear. I made that gummy bear a teddy bear. He might be a little bit stiff, but at least he's not gummy. <laughs> I stamped our gummy bear on a scrap of Nina's solar white cardstock. I colored him with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers and then die cut him out with the matching dye. I did add a touch of detail to his eyes, his nose and mouth with a Pigma Micron pen. That helped sell him, I think, a little more as a real teddy bear. <laughs> I printed this sentiment on a piece of ivory cardstock using my Silhouette software and the Dream State font. I die cut that with a three and a quarter inch by four and a half inch lawn fawn stitched rectangle die, and I ink blended some antique linen distress oxide ink around the edges and in the center above the sentiment. That was matted on craft cardstock, and then on white cardstock, and then on auburn pearl cardstock before going down on an A2 white card base. The bear is mounted with foam tape and a simple heart sequin adds a tiny little touch of shine. This is a great masculine Valentine card. And you know how much I love a good pun. Without you, life would be unbearable. There are even more dyes in this kit. We got this great Hershey's Kiss die, but at least we got a kiss sentiment as well. We've got a perfect match, two kisses with I love you. So the banner from the Dove stamp is what inspired this card. It kind of looks like the pull tab on a kiss. So I die cut the kisses from some Sizzix Silver Texture Roll Paper. This works really nice, has some great wrinkles to it. I think it looks quite a lot like foil. I stamped and fussy cut the banner using intense black ink and some alcohol markers on the hearts. I glued the banner and the two kisses together in a little vignette for the center. Now I stamped the scallop stamp on the azalea cardstock using azalea ink and I die cut it out using the matching die. You have to look close to see that same color stamping, but I think you can see that on the edge of that azalea cardstock. I matted that on a piece of coral berry cardstock and trimmed the corners to match. I performed a little stamp surgery cutting away the reasons why from I love you on this stamp and stamped the simple I love you using azalea ink and I set that with some clear embossing powder as well. I also added a kiss for you sentiment on the inside of the card using more azalea ink and I added the lips die cut in red and glossed up with some of my clear glaze pen. This would be the perfect Valentine along with one of those giant chocolate kisses. <laughs> that kiss die should come in very handy over the years. What a nice usable die. I think anybody would recognize these as Hershey's Kisses, especially with that little pull flag. I love you. A kiss for you and one for me. <laughs> so this card started forming in my mind fairly early in this journey and once I did this teddy bear card it kind of felt a little vintage to me so I thought we'd go all out and here we have my vintage valentine L is for the way you look at me O is for the only one I see V is very, very extraordinary. E is even more than anyone that you adore can love. <laughs> a classic Valentine and a classic song. <laughs> so the love letters are cut from ruby red and black cardstock and glued together for a nice shadow effect. I die cut four large hearts from the peony cardstock and four flowers from a scrap of green cardstock with the heart flowers added in coral berry cardstock and shaded with a little alcohol marker. I glued the stems to the hearts in two directions, one, two, one, two, and then added the letters on top. So I spaced those letters out on a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of ivory cardstock, and I turned to my Silhouette software to lay out the lyrics. I printed this using the Monterey BT font 
And I did a little more ink blending around the edges with that antique linen distress oxide ink. I added a thin black mat and glued those to a top folding craft card base. I glued the heart letters in place and decided to bring it all together on the inside of the card. It's the same ivory cardstock, black mat with the love die cut assembled with craft and ruby red cardstock, and then a thin, fussy cut black mat around to unify everything. I did add a little sparkle pen to the letters on that love there. I think you can see that sparkle. Love is the next lyric after the lyrics on the front. It's love is all that I can give to you. I really enjoy using song lyrics on my cards whenever appropriate, and I truly adore this vintage feeling Valentine. L is for the way you look at me. <laughs> so I've actually neglected one of the Matchbox stamps in this kit, and I decided that a Magic Slider card might be a great way to really push the interactive nature of this kit. And we have... Baby, you light my fire. The little pull tab on the bottom, and when you pull it, <laughs> you set the fire free. Come on, baby, light my fire. A magic slider card with the inside of that matchbox popping out and all aflame. I tried my best to film my assembly of this card, so let's see what I've got for you. I hope this is informational. <laughs> uh, let's try and put together a little magic slider card that'll make the inside of the box pop out of the matchbox by magic. So here's my matchbox pieces. These are both die cut from some thin, um, probably 60 pound gray cardstock. I find these flaps are much easier to fold the thinner cardstock you use. For the inside box, I die cut this two times from that same gray cardstock, and on one of those, I fussy cut the inside back panel of that. I cut that out from the outer frame, then colored that with some alcohol marker, made it a little bit darker, and then glued those both together on top of my second die cut. So this is two of those 60 pound sheets together. A little thicker gives us a little dimension in the bottom of our sheet there. So let's go ahead and stamp this. I haven't used the Baby You Light My Fire stamp set yet. So I'll try and do a little shadow stamping on this. I've lined up my stamp to be where I want it, I think, in the middle of our matchbox cover. And we're going to scoot that up just a tiny bit, and we're going to scoot it to the right about the same amount. So those are both are just fractionally away from the edges. And we're going to stamp this with some unicorn white pigment ink. That's going to be our little shadow. And we don't want to smash this down. There you go, you can see that. We're gonna go ahead and stamp that one more time. Go ahead and give that just a little extra press right there. Okay, there you can see we've got that stamped nicely, still all in the same place. We'll clean off our stamp and make sure that our pigment ink dries on this piece. I think that's dried pretty well. Now we're going to put it back in the corner of our Misty, tight up against the corner. And since we're stamping on top of pigment ink, I reached for other pigment ink to go on top of that. So we're using uh, Archival Ink in Vermilion. Let's see how that comes out. We'll probably have to stamp this a couple of times. There you go. It is doing what we want it to do. And we'll take a few inkings to get that white pigment ink covered up well. Make sure we're in the corner. I have to push a little harder over here because I've got the magnet right there. Ink it up again. Stamp it again. Almost perfect. Let's do it one more time. Paying attention to that flame right in the center. Still nicely in that corner. I think that's it. Baby, you light my fire. It's got that nice little white highlight around the back of that. We'll let this dry just a little bit. Now, I do like adding a strike plate over here. It is outlined with cut lines, but I think adding a striking surface there adds a lot to the look of a matchbook. So I actually die cut a partial piece here 
out of darker gray and I'm just going to cut out our little strike plate over here. Just follow the cut lines, just connect to the cut lines and then we're going to add that to the side of our box. Just some light liquid glue and there's our strike plate. Now I think that this fold line over here is extremely difficult to fold because of that cut line right next to it. So I will take a small ball stylus and I'm going to reinforce that fold line just with my metal ruler and reinforce that so that I get as good a fold on that as I can get without disturbing that cut line. I do find that folding that on a actual straight edge will help train that crease for when you fold it backwards. I do think that having that strike plate there helps keep those cut edges from rolling up. So both sides are folded now. And I may have been doing this backwards for the whole time, but I really <laughs> like the fact that this actually slides into the box. I was going to fill this up with matchsticks and fire. Baby, you light my fire. So let's just glue them down. should work. So here's our front panel. Let's trim this down to four inches by five and a quarter. Now we'll glue our hearts in place. Again, I just used a piece of tape on the back to hold those three pieces together. So they'll all glue down quite nicely. That looks pretty even. Okay, those are all dry. Let's start planning out our magic slider mechanics. So here is our matchbox with our insert. We'll just eyeball that into the center. I think that looks good. So we'll mark the bottom of that. I think we'll probably be happiest if we don't let that go beyond the bottom edge of those bottom flames there so it doesn't get caught. So I'm going to mark that, the bottom of that, as the top of our slider. Okay, so we'll mark the center of this card. This is four inches wide, so we'll mark it at two. We'll take our T-square and line it up with our center mark. We're going to go from that line to that line, from that line to that line. So that should carry this piece from there to there, from there to there. <laughs> cut this line with our craft knife. We're gonna cut it just on either side of our pencil line. I think I'm going to come up just a little bit so we don't show beyond the bottom and we'll go beyond the top here. We have lots of room beyond the top. So I'll pull my ruler right close to that line, and let's say we give it a extra quarter inch here. So we'll go from there, straight down to just before the bottom line. We'll flip it around. We'll go to the other side of our pencil line and match that. There's our little channel that our slider carriage will run on. We'll erase these lines. And then we need a piece behind here. We're gonna cut this down to four by five and a quarter. We'll mark the center of this two inches and then we want a half inch. So I'm gonna go three eighths inches 
on either side. Then we'll take our T ruler, just draw those lines all the way along the card. So this is where we're going to make our channel. We'll go to here, we'll take that channel up to there. Go ahead and draw those in. This is gonna be on the back so nobody will see anything. And then we'll cut away this part and this part. This will form the track for our plastic bag to ride along. And then I have some plastic trash bag already cut. I'm gonna give that just a little bit more leeway here. Cut one side of this just a little bit wider. We'll cut our conveyor belt to size. That's probably more than we need. Then we'll use some score tape to attach those together. Pop our liner paper off and then make our loop. We want this snug but not tight. Press that right down into that and we'll trim off the excess. Run it a few times. That moves pretty good. Okay, let's make a pull tab. I've got a one inch piece of cardstock scored down the center at half an inch. We're going to glue those together just to give us a very sturdy push and pull stick. And we'll add that to the back of our conveyor belt. We'll begin with a couple of pieces of score tape right on the seam. And we'll do an extra one. Pull off our liner paper and add our pull tab. Of course, it's way too long, but that's what it's doing right there. Now we need a little angle piece so it can attach to this from underneath there. I just cut a simple square. I'm going to fold it in half. We'll split it on one side. And that's what's going to go through our little slot here. We'll add some score tape to those little flappies. Jump down to my eighth inch. It's been a while since I've done a magic slider card. Pull the liner paper up on those. I'm going to stick these to our conveyor belt. I'm going to trim the edges off just a touch. And there's our mechanism. Now we want to give some thickness to our edges here. So here I have a couple more pieces cut to size, and then we'll add these to either side of our channel just to give a little room for our conveyor belt to move. We could use foam tape here, but I think foam tape adds more dimension than we actually need. Here's our double second piece. There you go, plenty of free movement there. We'll just do foam tape on the back. Okay, I have the center marked here. I'm going to punch a hole in that so I can actually grab our pull tab. That's how it goes. So, okay, I think we can glue these two pieces together. I hope we can glue these two pieces together. Nothing down the center, please. That includes right there. <laughs> Nothing there. Nothing there. That looks about right. There we go. Get it well centered. Our slop slide goes up and down. That would be where we cut our tab off. So just for more equal weight in carrying this, I'm going to split this down the center as well. A little off from our other center. We'll use some eighth inch score tape again on these tabs and double up on it. No room to double up on that side. Almost down to the end of that roll. Peel up our liner paper. We just want to get it in the center. Wrap our outer piece around it. And that's where we glue down to. Tape this on top. See how that works. And... There we go. So we'll cut off our pull tab here. The light, simple stamp. I don't think you can mistake that. This is going to fit on a card base like this. 
I can't resist. Little fun bit on the inside here. Let's stamp that. Hope that's in a good position. Made from the heart, right in the center. Perfect. Okay, so let's add some foam tape to the back of this. Give us a little channel for our handle to run through. That'll keep it from going wonky. You don't want it too tight. And I will add some liquid glue on top of our foam tape here, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room in order to keep the tab from getting stuck, the pull tab from getting stuck. I'll tape it in place on the front. That'll keep it from moving around while I put this on the card front so that you can adjust where everything goes. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and press that down. And now, gluing our top piece on. So we're going to add glue down the sides and a little bit of glue on our top here. It slides in behind the tabs, behind the top, and I think that's right where it belongs. Let's give it a couple of minutes to dry before we start <laughs> fiddling with it. Let's give it a whirl. Baby, you light my fire. Pull. <laughs> this uh, magic slider card is one of my favorite interactive cards to make, and it works so well with this whole faux matchbox theme. Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> so that should cover all my Valentine needs this year. <laughs> We've got a, a nice variety of cards here with only... Only four actual match boxes. And while I wasn't able to use every single sentiment stamp in this kit, I do believe that I used every single die. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any favorites this month. This kit is still available at Hero Arts. If I managed to catch your eye or you know someone who's your perfect match, then you should grab a kit for yourself before they sell out. If you do go shopping at Hero Arts, please use my links in the description down below. It is always sincerely appreciated and actually helps support this page. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I wish us all a new year filled with lots of friends, tons of joy, and plenty of time for crafting. <laughs> Please remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your crafty friends. Don't run with scissors. <laughs> I send you and yours lots of love and laughter. And as always, happy crafting. For more detailed information, better pictures, and product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.